project, you will be needing a foam cord trifold display board such as this one, which is 36 inches tall and 24 inches wide with 12 inch flaps. For the wallpaper of your set, you'll be needing eight pieces of 12 by 12 inch scrapbook paper. I will be using these sheets that I found at Michael's. The first set is for the top of the wall, which is this nice uh, light pink striped paper. And the second set is for the bottom, which is this light pink damask paper. And both of these I found at Michael's. You will also be needing a cutting surface, a pencil, an exacto knife, and a ruler. The reason that you need a cutting surface or a good piece of cardboard is because otherwise your exacto knife might scratch the table. Additionally, your ruler, you might want to be metal because if you use a wooden ruler, the exacto knife might shave off parts of it. You will also need washable glue and a paintbrush to spread it. Optionally, if you want some plastic for a clear window, I use clear binding covers. I've opened up the flaps and started measuring on what will be the outside of the set, and that's the side where the flaps fold away from. So the first measurement you're going to make is 6 inches from the bottom, and that's where the bottom of your windows will be. Then you're going to make a measurement 19 inches from the bottom again, and that's where the top of your window will be. Then you're going to make a 22 inch measurement, and that is where your ceiling will be. And then you'll add another 6 inches on top, and that is for the roof. I'm opening up my poster board, and I'm lying it down flat. Now I'm going to put my cutting pad underneath the poster board, and cut along the 6 inch line for the roof. The thing about cutting foam core is you're not going to cut through with just one cut of the X-Acto knife. Instead, you're going to repeatedly score it along a ruler until you cut all the way through. And I'm just going to keep cutting until I feel like the knife has gone all the way through. And make sure to, as you cut, move the pad underneath. Now I'm going to flip over the foam core and cut from the other side a little bit. If you get a rough cut like this, it probably means that your X-Acto knife is a little bit dull. So I'm going to go change my blade. I've just changed the blade, and this is the cut with the new blade, and as you can see, it's much cleaner than the cut with the old blade. As you can see, I've also cut off this, the top of these two side pieces, and I'm going to set aside these pieces of foam core that I cut off for use as trim later on. Earlier we had marked a 6 inch line and a 19 inch line, and these are the bottoms and the tops of the windows. I've put in pencil along each line, and that's where I'm going to put my windows. Now that I know where the tops and bottoms of my windows are, I'm going to draw in the sides of the middle window. So first, I'm going to measure 12 inches in from the outside of the board to find the middle. Then, I'm going to measure two and a quarter inches out from the middle on each side to get a four and a half inch wide window. The total height of the window is 13 inches, and from the top of the window down, I'm going to measure 4 inches to put a half inch piece of trim. Now I've marked out my window and I'm ready to cut. When you cut a corner, you're going to cut a little bit beyond the line. So the line ends here, but I'm actually cutting all the way down to here. I have scored each line at least a dozen times. And now I'm going to neaten the edges. Now I've cut out the top window and I had to score each line about a dozen times. On either side of the center window, one and a half inches away, we're going to do two more windows, both of which are still four and a half inches wide. Now that we've cut out the windows, we're going to score the roof, and that's six inches down from the top. And when I say score, I mean that we're only going to do one or two cuts so that it does not go all the way through. You're also going to unjoin the top six inches of the side and front.
And now I'm going to bend this back using the scores on the front to help me bend it. That's going to be my roof. Now I'm going to score the sides so that they can fold underneath. Now I'm going to score along this. Now I'm going to fold in the two corners of the roof. To cut out the windows of the wallpaper, we're going to use extremely small pieces of tape to tape the paper where you want it on the walls. And it should be just enough tape to hold it in place. Once you do that, you're going to fold over the two flaps and flip over the walls. Now I'm going to use a pencil to trace out where the windows are. When you cut out the windows and you get to the top window, it can be a little bit tricky. But I just cut through this half inch part to cut out the top window. This part will be glued down anyway and have trim covering it. Now I have my paper all cut out. Now that you've finished with the paper, it's the time to add in plastic windows if you'll be doing that. To do this, I use the cutouts from the foam core, the windows, to trace out the amount of plastic that I'll need, leaving approximately a quarter inch for gluing. I've removed the paper and I'm going to glue on the windows with some Elmer's glue. Put the glue onto the foam core and then place the windows. While we wait for the glue on the windows to dry, I'm going to go ahead and glue the paper onto the walls. To glue the paper, you're going to outline a square of glue the size of your paper, and then you're going to use a brush like this to spread it towards the middle of your poster board. This will get rid of any potential lumps or water that will make the paper wrinkly. Then spread the paper on top of the glue. Okay. Make sure you get a little bit of glue along the edge of the windows. When you glue on the paper, focus on lining up the windows. While you wait for your wallpaper to dry, you're going to cut strips of foam core for your window borders and a chair, <laughs> chair rail. Using the leftover piece of foam core that you cut off from the top at the beginning, you're going to cut six 15 inch by half inch strips, six 7 inch by half inch strips, and one 24 inch by 3 quarters inch. Actually, the pieces for the sides of the windows only need to be 13 inches instead of 15. Additionally, the piece for the chair rail, that's the 3 quarters inch wide uh, piece, only needs to be 8 inches long. I decided to cut the bottom trim exactly because my windows are so close together. I'm not putting in a middle bar in my windows, however, if you did, this is what it would look like. Now that you have the window frames glued, you're going to cut that 8, uh, eight inch by 3 quarters inch piece of foam core into the chair rail. Uh, you'll have four parts, two 3 inch parts, and two really small parts like this. Note that the 3 inch part shouldn't extend all the way to the fold between the front and side because that will make it easier to fold the board over. Additionally, I'm not putting chair rail on the, on the sides because that will make it easier to store. 
This is the finished interior of the bakery set. I've used a table, chair, and other foods from previous videos, and I encourage you to decorate the outside of the set with using similar methods. Here is a picture of a exterior of a bakery that I made when I was younger. Enjoy your bakery and thanks for watching.